Hey guys, in this video I'll be going through how to solve lead code question 111, minimum depth of a binary tree. Okay, so for this question we're going to be given a binary tree and we just have to find the minimum depth, meaning the height of the first node that is considered a leaf. Um, and a leaf is just going to be anything with no children. So looking at this example we're given, 9 is the closest node to the top that has no children branching off of it. Um, and so since 9 is on the second level of our tree, with this 3 being on the first level, and then this would be the second level, we would return a 2 here. Okay, um, so there's kind of two approaches you can take to solving any kind of like binary tree searching um, and it's either going to be depth first search or breadth first search um, and the approach that we're going to want to take here is breadth first search because um, if we do a depth first search here we are going to have to search every single node in the tree because um, you'll have to essentially like look through every node and store the depth and then at the end um, return whatever the lowest number was that you found. Um, whereas with breadth first search, you can loop through um, like level by level. And so then the first leaf that you encounter um, is going to be the one that's the closest to the top. Um, so we won't necessarily have to check every node in the tree and that'll make this a faster algorithm. Okay, so um, if we actually start coding this, um, the first thing we're going to want to do is make a queue. Um, and we're going to store nodes for a tree. Um, and this is just going to start with our root node. And then we'll loop while um, nodes is not empty. And this loop is basically just going to be um, like a while true because we'll never not return from this loop, but we're going to have to put a return statement outside of it because otherwise the C++ compiler will complain that not all paths will have a return value. Um, so basically in this loop, what we have to do is check whether or not we're at a leaf. Um, if we are, we want to return the level that we're at. And if we're not at a leaf, we're going to want to add the children to our queue. Um, and then kind of do some calculations to determine what level we're on. So we'll first handle um, checking whether it's a leaf or not. And I'm just going to paste this code in to save time typing. Um, so this if statement is going to check if the current node, which is nodes.front or the first one in the queue, um, if that's left child, if that one's left child is null pointer and its right child is null pointer, then we know that's a um, leaf node. And then we can return a min, min depth variable, which we'll have to declare up here. Okay, and then if that's not the case, um, we're gonna have another variable um, another integer that s tracks the size of our current level and we'll also do one to s tell us how many nodes we've gone through on the current level. Okay, so since we just looked at a node we can increment our scene variable. Um, and then 
since we have not found a leaf yet, we need to take whatever node we're just on and add its children to our queue because we're going to have to check those as well. Um, and I'm just going to paste this in again. Okay, so these if statements just make sure that we're not looking at a null child. Um, so like if there is a child to the left of a node, we want to add that to our queue. Um, and same thing on the right side. Um, and then we're done with the current node that we're on, so we can just do nodes.pop to remove it from the front of the queue. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is our size checking. So um, I'll just paste this last segment in here. Okay, so all this is doing is saying if um, the size of our level, so like the level in the tree, um, if that is equal to how many we've seen, then we've completed the level. So we start with this at zero, like we haven't seen any yet. Um, and the first level size is just one, because there's only going to be one node on the first level. Um, so after we check that root node, this will be equal. Um, and then we're going to set level size equal to the size of our next level, because at this point, we'll have every node on this next level. Um, and then we'll put our counter back at zero so it can track to see when we reach the end of that level again. And then our depth or like the height of the tree that we're on is going to increment um, so that we know when we re return this, which level that first leaf node was seen at. And that should pretty much be it. So I'll run this to make sure it works. Oh, and we need to do one thing I missed here. Um, at the very beginning, we didn't, we need to make sure that our root node is not null. Um, and if it is null, then the return value is just going to be zero. OK, and that was accepted. Um, so for the complexity of this algorithm, um, I'll start with the space complexity. We're storing a queue here. So that's going to um, be based on the number of nodes that we see, obviously. And in the worst case, it'll be um, the size of the total nodes in the tree. So this is going to have a O of n um, space complexity. And this is the only da uh, data structure that is based on the input. Um, these variables will just be the same every time. So this is our space complexity O of n. And then for time, Um, we're going to have O of n as well because we are going to be just looping through up to the number of nodes that we have. And within this loop, um, we're only doing constant operations. So this check is constant, um, incrementing is constant, doing um, accessing the front element in a queue, pushing to a queue, or popping from a queue. Those are all constant operations. Um, and then accessing the size of a queue again is constant. So um, our largest like time complexity to worry about is just the loop itself, which is O of n time. OK, um, I hope that going through this solution was helpful for you guys. And thank you for watching.